read off. From what? Those things that have nothing to do with the most high. Nobody's turning back to the power. Nobody's turning back to our street. They're still dealing with their own bang on people. That's what's wrong with our people. How many? Shalom Israel, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Shai. Thanking Him for another opportunity to learn about our four ways and to learn about our five ways. Today's class, the vision of Obadiah, God's judgment of the so-called white man. Uh, this is a book that's not, will never, ever, 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 ever be poured in the Christianity church. And a lot of Israel, man, they don't be dealing with the number one enemy on the planet, the number one adversary to God is Esau. Uh, a lot of Israel, they still love Esau. A lot of Israel, they still laying in the bed with Esau. A lot of Israel, they still trusting in their master. A lot of Israel don't really understand that this is the number one murderer on the planet. Think about what race of peoples got the amount of bloodshed on their hand in malice than this race of peoples. I mean, they'll pull you over in your car for no reason. They'll shoot you down in the street for no reason. They'll put sanctions on your, on your, on your country for no reason. They'll tax you for no reason. I mean, I mean, just living here in America, how many taxes do you have to pay until you get your check? You know, we get so-called lucky here in Texas. We don't have no state tax. But, man, just imagine if you living in California, 13.3% state tax. Then whatever uh, the amount of money that you're making, you got federal taxes. Then you got sales taxes. Then you got... You know, Medicaid. Then you got Social Security. I mean, this is the devil, man. And for anybody to say that this man is not the number one enemy on the planet, then you might have to get the same judgment that he got. But we're going to dive into it, man. We're going to go to the book of Obadiah. The book of Obadiah. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Read this out. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus say the Lord, God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Concerning Edom. Edom is Esau. Idumia, Timon, Dedan. Esau has a lot of names in the Bible. Just like the Israelites have a lot of names in the Bible. Judah, Mount Zion, Jerusalem, Israel. It's all the same thing concerning the so-called white men. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. We have heard a prophecy from the Most High. Read. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. So what, what, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is basically the spokesperson. It's the person that represents whoever. So Esau is, a, is the ambassador among the heathens. Esau is the spokesperson for the heathens. If you look at the United Nations, who, 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 who the main one over there dealing and willing? It's the so-called white man. You look at the European Union, who's the main one dealing, dealing and willing and making all the deals? It's the so-called white man. He is the ambassador among the heathen. Read on. And rise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So this is a prophecy showing the demise of, of, of this beast, man, of this animal, you know, and a lot of us, we still love them, you know, because, you know, when we get our paycheck, you know, you look who, look who name signed your paycheck. It's that man. This man has so much bloodshed on his hands. This man, this is a very, the Bible, the Bible calls him a beast. In the field, a snake, that's what he is. Genesis 25 and 19. We're going to get into the genealogy of Esau and Jacob because this is very important. A lot of Israel don't even know who 
what Jacob is, who 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 Jacob is, who Esau is. They just, I don't know. We're going to get some understanding on this. Genesis 25 and 19. This is the birth of Jacob and Esau from Isaac and Rebekah. Read this out. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. So the bloodline starts with Abraham. You have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Read. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. So when Isaac got married to Rebekah, Isaac was 40 years old. Read. The daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Padaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. The what? The Syrian. So, you know, I thought it was a sin for Israelites to marry outside of the nations of Israel. So why did Isaac take to him a wife, somebody from Syria? Rebecca says a sister of Laban, the Syrian. So this is before that the Israelites went into Egypt, right? To show you, man, all, all Israel wasn't in Egypt at that time, the chosen generation. But we're going to go to Genesis 22 and 20. I'm just trying to show y'all in the Bible. Sometimes when you read it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show who they are by where they live, not necessarily their nationality. So it's like Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. He was a Midianite, but he was an Israelite. Uh, uh, Joseph's, Joseph's uh, wife was the daughter of, I forget his name, but he was also a priest as well. Uh, so we're going to get into the genealogy of Rebecca real quick. Read this out. The book of Genesis, chapter 22 and verse 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. So Abraham had a brother named Hor. Read. Buzz, his firstborn. Buzz was the firstborn of Nahor. Read. And Buzz, his brother. So he had two children by him. Read. And Kimuel, the father of Aram. The Kimuel, the father of Aram. Read on. And Kazed, and Hazot, and Pildash, and Jalak, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begot Rebekah. These eight Malchut did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. So just because Rebekah was living in Syria, she was an Israelite man. A lot of times, these brothers not going line upon line in these scriptures, man. They just go and they just take things face value. You got to get in these scriptures and you got to live diligently. So just because it says she was a Syrian, you go down to the genealogy. She was an Israelite man. But let's go back. Genesis 25, 21. Genesis. 25, 21. I just want to get that out there, man, because sometimes you got these stumbling blocks in these scriptures, and these brothers they don't want to get in and they don't want to deal with it because they're not dwelling in these, they're not dwelling in a Bible. Read on. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. So Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because at this time, Rebecca, she could not conceive at this time. So he entreated or he pleaded with the Lord. For his wife, read. Because she was barren. Because she couldn't conceive at this time, read. And the Lord was entreated of him. So the Lord heard the brother prayers, read. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the sister she conceived with child, read on. And the children struggled together within her. So it's letting you know that there's more than one child in her when she conceived the seed. She had twins. Read on. And she said, if it be so. If, I, if, if, if I'm truly pregnant. Read. Why am I thus? Why am I having so many complications with this pregnancy? Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she went to pray. She went to, you know, make inquisition for the Most High. Read on. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. He said what? Two nations are in thy womb. So he letting you know, man, this is going to be a separation from the righteous and the unrighteous. Two nations of people. Or in thy womb. Read. 
And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And two manner of peoples shall be separated from thy bowels. Just like Cain and Abel. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other Now people. it's giving you characteristics of these two children that's struggling in her womb. It says, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Or one nation shall be stronger than the other nation. You know, and you can, you can say this is talking about physical strength. I mean, because in a sense, it really is. But what it's really going into is rulership. It's going into power, structure. Read. And the elder shall serve the younger. See, when you know anything about inheritance or anything about blessings, who normally receives the inheritance? The elder normally receives the inheritance. But in this situation, just like with Ephraim and Manasseh, just like with uh, Solomon, the younger one had the blessing over the elder. It says, and the elder shall serve the younger. Go to 2 Samuel 8 and 14. I'm going to give you an example of the elder serving the younger. How, what that really means and what that really consists of. 2 Samuel chapter 8 verse 14. Read this out. Go look at 2 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 14. And he put garrisons in Edom. This is King David. This is when, 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 this is when David was ruling over Jerusalem and Israel. It said David put garrisons or he put sanctions in Edom. Read. Throughout all Edom put the garrisons. Put all, throughout all Edom he put up garrisons. Read. And all they of Edom became David's servants. So now we have in what? The elders doing what? Serving the younger. Read. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And the Lord blessed David wheresoever that he went. Let's get another example of what it's going to talk about. Let's say how the elder was going to serve the younger. See, right now, you know, we serve in Esau. You got to serve him for your food, your water, your clothes, uh, anything that you need. You got to go to him. It's actually supposed to be different. At one point in time, King David had it like that. Genesis 27 and 24. Genesis 27 and 24. Just showing you the basic demographic of Jacob and Esau because you can't understand the book of Obadiah without even knowing who Esau is or who Jacob is. So we're going to get it all the way down. Break it down. Genesis 27, 24. Read this. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 24. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. So at this time, as we all know, uh, Jacob supplanted Esau for his blessing through his mother. Uh, his mother wanted Jacob to get the blessing instead of Esau. And the blessing was to inherit the inheritance from your father. Because actually what it's supposed to be is, you know, how is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? What is is it's actually supposed to be Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Because Esau was the elder. But through the prophecy, the younger had to get the blessing. So this is Jacob getting the blessing from Isaac. Read on. And he said, bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison. Because Esau was a cunning hunter. That's why, you know, you probably go in your workplace and you go in your, you know, your boss office. He's going to have him a good deer head at the top. He's going to have him a good lion head at the top. Probably some, um, some, some impalas. Probably some, you know, deers and because that's what, that, that, that's in his DNA. That's in his nature to be a cunning hunter. Read. That my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him. And he did eat. And he brought him wine. And he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. Read. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him. And said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field, which the Lord have blessed. See, at this time, Isaac was old in age, and Isaac couldn't see that well. So how he told the, so how he told the difference between Jacob and Esau was, Jacob was a hairy man, always in the field, smelling like outside. I mean, Esau was a hairy man, 
always in the field smelling like outside. And Jacob was what? He was a plain man, smooth man, dwelling in tents, just like how we do now. Like to sit back and kill, probably sit back and chill, probably play some dominoes or some spades or something. While Esau, his fun day is basically going out, uh, being an animal, being a murderer that he is. Why do you think all the animals going extinct? Where they go? You know, they got hunting season out there for, for you know, birds and deer. Who, 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 who out there doing that? It's Esau. But Jacob covered himself with um, hairy garments and with the scent of his brother to receive the blessing. Read. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven. So he's telling him, this is the blessing that Jacob is getting. He's getting the blessing of the dew of heaven. Read. And the fatness of the earth. And the fatness of the earth. Read on. And plenty of corn and wine. Plenty of corn and wine. So basically, the same blessing that Jacob got through Isaac and through, uh, I mean, the same blessing that uh, Isaac got through Abraham is the same blessing that Jacob is getting at this time. Read. Let people serve thee. He said, what? Let people serve thee. Everybody's supposed to be serving us right now. I know a lot of us, we can't get that through our head, and we want to, you know, everybody to live in, in this utopia, but it'll never happen. This is a this is a prophecy through Jacob. We are Jacob. He said, let people serve thee. Let all of the other nations come to Mount Zion and serve Jacob. Read. And nations bow down to thee. Every other nation is supposed to be bowing down to us. But who is every nation bowing down to now? To the so-called white man. Read on. Be Lord over thy brother. He said what? Be Lord over thy brother. He's telling them specifically that we're supposed to be head over this devil, man. We're supposed to be head over this beast. But if you read the curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, you will see that the roles got reversed. Read. And let thy mother's son bow down to thee. And let thy mother's son Esau, he's supposed to be bowing down to us. Read. Cursed be everyone that curse of thee. Cursed be everyone that curse of thee. Like Esau cursed us, so he is the curse. Read. And blessed be he that bless of thee. If you cool with the Israelites, the Most High said, hey, you know, blessed is he that bless of thee. Genesis 25, 24. Just giving you a quick little background, man, so you can know about Jacob and Esau. And a lot of people thinking that Esau is the Arab, is the Arab man, because low key they still got a crush on a white man and a white woman. They can't, they can't give, they can't give it up. Genesis twenty five, twenty four. Read this out. The book of Genesis, chapter twenty five and verse twenty four. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, this is Rebecca. Read. Behold, there were twins in her womb. You got twins in her womb. Just because you twins don't mean you the same nation of peoples. Read. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Read that again, I. Huh? And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So it's letting you know what Esau looked like. Don't they give you a description in the Bible of what Yahweh should look like? And don't we follow that to the T, right? Hair like wool, skin like fine brass. You know, that's obvious, right? Well, who is who is this red man that's described in the Bible? What's the only nation of people on the planet that's literally red? It say Christ has skin like fine brass, hair like wool, right? Pull, it, pull this image up. I'm trying to see if people can actually see. Look at this image. This is a so-called white man. I want you to see. His shirt is white. What color is his skin texture? I want you to look at the red behind him. Match it up with his skin. This is the red man that the scriptures are talking about. I mean, can you open up your eyes and see Israel? You know, it, it took me about six months to actually really open up my eyes and to see that this man is actually red. Yeah, we'll call him a redneck all the time, but in our mind, we still think this dude is white. 
I mean, get a good look at this picture, Israel. Do you see the man's shirt? What color is the man's shirt? That's white, right? Look at his skin. I don't know. They'll say that's light brown or something. Uh, beige. You know, that's what they say. Beige. Olive. Olive. This dude ran like a firecracker, man. And that's how all of them people's is. Because they have a curse on them, no melanin. Now give me the image of the other one, who they say that Esau really is. They say the Arabians is Esau. Now is this dude red? This dude, more darker than everybody in this room. This is me, this man, see that's what the real Arabians look like. Them over there, them, 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 them Edomites over there posing as, 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 as Ishmael, this is real Ishmael right here. This dude is darkening everybody in this room. Put the other picture back up, Ock. I just want Israel to see this, man. Cut out all that confusion. Stop trying to save your level. Stop trying to save this beast. Which one is the red man? I mean, it's clear as day. It is clear as day. Genesis 25, 25. Read it again. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 25. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Esau got a multitude of definitions. Wasted away, red, hairy. That's just who he is, man, a cave beast. Esau is literally a monkey, man. Big ears and little lips. Hairy all over. That's what a monkey look like. Don't Esau tell us that we the one that look like a monkey? This dude look just like the monkey. Little lips, no lips. Big ears. Hairy all over. That's exactly what he look like because that's who he is. It's giving you clear characteristics in the Bible. Go to Genesis 27 11. Let's get some more. Some more characteristics on this, on this man. Read this, huh? The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man. He a what? Is a hairy man. Very hairy, man. I work with a couple of them Edomites, man. They back hair be sticking all out. They call a shirt, man. I mean, I can't make none of this stuff up. You look at these dudes' arms, man. It look like they got a whole forest on their arms. Very hairy individuals. And they're not the only hairy nation on the planet, man. Don't get that mixed and skewed of they the only hairy people. But it's telling you these dudes are red and hairy. Read. And I am a smooth man. Now I'm looking at all these brothers up here. Looking at their arm. You can't even really, can't even really see nothing. It's giving you the characteristics of who these peoples are. Genesis 25, 26. Genesis 25, 26. This is the thing we got to start understanding. Esau is a so-called white man, bro. Like, anybody coming out with all that garbage, man, you might as well kiss them goodbye because they're going to get put to death for not understanding the number one adversary on the planet. Read this. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, and verse 26. And after that came his brother out. And after that came his brother out, Jacob. Read. And his head took hold on Esau's heel. Now what do that mean? It say his head took hold of Esau's heel. So are you saying when Jacob and Esau was born that literally Esau came out and then Jacob was born after that and he was holding his hand on his heel? Jacob's name, Yaquab, it literally means to supplant or to hold one's heel. That's what his name means. And it's telling you in, in right here in Genesis 25, 26, that Jacob was going to supplant Esau for the blessing. That's what it really means to hold on to his heel. But we got to prove it. Because you know Israel, they're going to say we're making it up. Genesis 27 and 30. Genesis 27 and 30. You know... This dude, he wasn't actually holding on to his heel when he was born, man. That's a prophecy, but we're going to read it. Read this out. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 30. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, 
that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. So Jacob already got the blessing. Now Esau coming in for his blessing. Read. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. Read. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son. My firstborn Esau. So Isaac could not see right now, so that's why he asked Esau who he was. Read. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly. Isaac trembled very exceedingly because he just gave Jacob the blessing, thinking that Jacob was Esau at this time. Read. And said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it me? And I have eaten of it all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Read. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great, exceeding bitter cry. What did he do? And he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. That's how they get you, man. They start blue horn. They start crying. We done heard you crying before. It don't work no more. Read. And said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. Read. And he said, Thy brother came with sub sublimity. And have taken away thy blessing. He said, Thy brother has came with subtility and has taken away thy blessing. Thy brother came with deceit. So now we're going to get the understanding of what it means that Jacob hand held Esau's heel. Read verse 36. Verse 36. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? Isn't it not that he is rightly named Jacob or the supplanter? Read. For he hath supplanted me these two times. What did Jacob do? He hath supplanted me these two times. Read. He took away my birthright. He did what? He took away my birthright. So he held on to his heel to take away his birthright. Read. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he held on to his heel to take away his blessing. Read on. And he said, Hast thou taken away my blessing? And he said, Thou have not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau. Let's sit on that. Let's sit on that. Second Ezra chapter six verse seven. So holding on to the holding on to his heel, man. That, that, that's that's not literal. That's just showing you what Jacob was going to do to inherit the blessing. He had to supplant Esau. He had to overtake Esau. But we're gonna get some more on it. Read this out. The book of Second Ezra chapter six and verse seven. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting of sunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first, and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob had to supplant Esau to get the blessing so righteousness could come in the earth. Read. For Esau is the end of the world. Say what? For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of wickedness. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Jacob is the beginning of righteousness that followeth. Read verse 26. Verse 26. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another mean. Read. For evil shall be put out. That's what it means that the end of Esau world and then the beginning of Jacob is that followeth. What's going to partake is the evil shall be put out the whole planet. Read. And deceit shall be quenched. There will be no more deceiving. Read on. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. That's what it means when Jacob hold the hell of Esau. Just basically saying how righteousness is going to pour forth through the earth. And how Esau has to get put to Esau has to get put to death in order for that to happen. A lot of us we still want to walk hand in hand with this devil. We can't. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 2. Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah chapter 1 Verse 2 Read this on the book of Obadiah Chapter 1 and verse 2 Behold I have made thee small Among the heathen He said he made him small Among the heathen Small just mean hated or despised Or not liked Read 
Thou art greatly despised. He's saying the same thing. He said he, this, this man is the most despised nation on the planet. The only people that really love the so-called white man is him. Man, I'll never forget that video, man. Bishop of downtown. And then uh, Ham came out there and he seen that picture of white Jesus, man. Ham, man, Ham flipped out. You didn't think you're anything against me. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. And that's how Ham get down, man. Ham and Esau, they like really best friends. But he said, Thou art greatly despised. Read on. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. He said, What? The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. He said, The pride of Esau's heart have deceived thee. How do Esau get this pride though? He said, The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. What kind of pride is this? Is this pride because of money? Is this pride because of land? How did he get this pride on him? It say, the pride of thy heart have deceived thee. Jeremiah 49, 16. We're going to see. How did the so-called white man get so puffed up that his pride deceived him? Did he get it by money? Did he get it by deceit? Did he get it by... How did, he, how did this pride get on this man? How did it? Read this out. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49 and verse 16. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee. That's how he got that pride on, through his fierceness. The so-called white man has an army base in everybody country. God. You go to Russia, you go to Libya, you go to Iraq, you go to Kazakhstan, you go to anywhere in South America, Guatemala, Belize, you go to Cuba, uh, you, you go to Argentina, you go to uh, Ghana, you go everywhere on the planet, there is a U.S. embassy set up in your homeland. That's how this man is very prideful because he's feeling his heart, who's going to take him down? Who's going to take this man out of power and rulership when I got a U.S. embassy in everybody, in everybody country? That's how he got that pride on him. Read on. Thy terribleness have deceived thee. Thy fierceness have deceived thee. Read. And the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Let's go back over Obadiah. Obadiah, verse 3. Read this out. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Now we know how we got that pride through the, through the prophecy of Jeremiah. He got that pride through what? His fierceness, his terribleness. Dropping ICBM missiles on people, fighter jets, drones, controlling the water, submarines, uh, army and navy bases and everybody, uh, homeland. Read. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. Where he dwell at? Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. See, Esau, he's a cave beast, man. That's part of his name. Caucasian. Caucasian means cave dweller. Somebody that dwell in caves. And people don't understand that this man's original homeland is literally in the mountains. That's how the Most High made this man is to be an animal. Just how you have a pig and the pig purpose of being created is to do what? Is to be a part of the ecosystem. Is to be a garbage disposal amongst the earth. That's why pigs, they eat dead people. They eat dead bodies. They eat garbage. They eat everything. It say, though thou dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Give me Genesis 36 and 1. Genesis 36 and 1. I'm just showing you who this book is really about. You know, I don't want none of us going out, oh, Esau may be this, Esau may be that. No. This man is the so-called white man. And this man has a great judgment upon his head. And his judgment is, his whole race of people is going to die by slaughter. Now, I know it's kind of hard for us, but hey, it is what it is. Read this out. The book of Genesis, chapter 36 and verse 1. Now, these are the generations of Esau. Who is Edom? So Esau is Edom. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Where he dwell at? In Mount Seir. It's saying that the capital of his homeland is in a mountain, man. He's from a little cave. 
How can this man be in civilization with everybody else when this man's homeland is in the cave, man? You say, though thou dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. It's showing you in the book of Genesis 36 where that cliff of the rock is. That's why his name is, uh, that's why he called himself Caucasian. Because after he migrated after the, after he migrated out of Mount Seir, where did he go to? He went to another mountain. The Caucasus Mountain of Georgia, Russia. Everywhere that this man go, he, he, he's in caves. This man in the caves in the United States as well. Read on. Esau is Edom. You say what? Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. Obadiah 1 verse 3. We're going to break this all the way down. You say line upon line, right? That's right. You got to go line upon line. You ain't going line upon line, man. You missing so much meat. Read it again from the top. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. We understand where that cliff of the rock is, Mount Seir. Read. Whose habitation is high. Whose what? Whose habitation is high. Living very high up. That's why when you see a man, they on the 85th floor. Of the skyscraper. You know, we see that. We think that's luxury. When somebody will go out on their balcony and try to plant a garden on the 85th floor. <coughs> you can't, man. That's fake luxury. Read on. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? I mean, I don't blame him. You know, submarines, jets, all the money in the world, controlling the world's currency, uh, you know, controlling the oil, all of the natural resources, controlling the architecture, Controlling the agriculture. I mean, I don't blame him. I don't blame this man for literally thinking like that. Who gonna bring him down to the ground? A very prideful devil. Who's gonna bring this nation down to the ground? And a lot of us, we don't want this nation to be brought down to the ground. Because what did the Israelites do in Egypt when they complained about Aaron and Moses because of what? Pharaoh gave them food, Pharaoh gave them water. Pharaoh gave them a job, and that's how they wanted to live their life. They didn't want to be free. It's the same thing that's going on right here in Israel. What Esau over here doing? Esau gave you food. Esau gave you water. Esau gave you a job. He take all your money out your paycheck, and we want to continue to live our life like that. We don't want to be free from the beast, but we will be free from the beast. It say, who shall bring me down to the ground? Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Let's get some more understanding on that. Who shall bring me down to the ground? This is the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord concerning Edom. So we got to understand who Edom is and understand this vision. Because this hasn't came to pass and it will come to pass, man. It will. Read this out. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 1. Read. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the greatest fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So it's telling you, who's the controller of Babylon, the great or the daughter of Babylon? Who's the controller of the beast? It's Esau. It's him. And this place is literally a habitation of devils, a habitation of deceivers. T.D. Jakes, one of the top deceivers out there. You got the Pope, one of the top deceivers out there. All these Christianity pastors, the top deceivers out there. In the hold of every foul spirit. You got homosexuals over here running wild, man. You got transgenders over here running wild, man. People all into that porn. They all into their drugs. They all into this sex. These, 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 these pills. I mean, this is describing the white man at his finest. And it says, in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It's nothing but malice over here in Babylon the Great. Evil doings. But, but Israel, we, we kind of, you know, still... Um, supplanting in that. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. 
For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. That's why when you read in Obadiah verse 3, it's saying the same thing. She said, I sit a widow, I will see no sorrow. Verse 3 in Obadiah say, who shall bring me down to the ground? It's talking about the same person, saying the same thing. Just breaking this down all the way. You got something, Mark? Yeah. To add on to what uh, Kath was bringing out, give me Baruch 4 and 25. Because Esau is an extremely prideful man. He throwing his power just throughout the world, man. Like he was saying, every nation that you go to, every country you go to, you see this man with an embassy. If the Arabs are truly Esau, what are the embassies in? Who's in every nation? What control do they truly have? Read it right quick. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 25. My children. My who? My children. That's you, man. That's when we go out every Sabbath. Every day of the week we have classes to let you know. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives, man. This Bible is you. Those are lights, those are you. You go through these curses just like these curses they went through our forefathers. We are to this day still going through these things, man. Read, huh? Suffer patiently. Do what? Suffer patiently. Because this is the recompense that we're supposed to get for breaking the laws of our God. We're supposed to go through these curses because we wanted to be ignorant. We wanted to be like Becky and Bob. Read, huh? Suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God. From who? From God. Our Father is doing nothing but chastising us because we wanted to be wicked children. We are those same spirits that was out there idolizing uh, 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 the, 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 the kings and princes of, uh, of uh, the other wicked nations. We are here idolizing LeBron James. We are here idolizing Meek Mill and Lil Duval. Read up. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. Have what? Have persecuted thee. Put poison in your water. For have persecuted thee. Lighting your body on fire. Have persecuted thee. Leaving your body hanging from trees for everybody else to see. Have persecuted thee. Read, huh? But shortly thou shalt see his destruction. But when? But shortly thou shalt see his destruction. That's what we bring it out. The downfall of this wicked nation. That's right. Shortly it is coming. And if you're keeping these commandments, you're going to have a hand to make sure his downfall is complete. That's all I got, huh? And, <clears throat> slide and the thing is, you know, these things got to get brought to, 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 to Jacob. Or these things got to get brought to the Israelites. Because us coming in, this part of the Bible right here, you know, a lot of Israelites, especially you brothers, a lot of... Uh, a lot of Israelite brothers, they really can't get down with this, you know. God. And you'll see it in a lot of brothers, you know. They, they're they real timid, you know. They got a lot of emotions on them. Uh, a lot of effeminate brothers in Israel. Uh, I don't understand what Bible that they're reading. Uh, we must go to war to get back the kingdom. We must go to war to take back the homeland. I don't know if they think that we're going to have a debate or something. We're going to both open up the Bible and we're going to, no, man, it's going to be bloodshed. And you sisters, you got to come on with it too. You got to understand that this kingdom of heaven that you want, this is what's going to have to go down. It's not going to have it's, it's not going to be no magical thing. That's it's right. going to be you going to have to take it by force. That's right. And we trying to get our people to get their mind right, but only two thirds of our people going to get actually get their mind right. Obadiah verse four. We're going to the book of Obadiah. We're going to read verse 4. Read this out. The book of Obadiah. Chapter 1, verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Hold up. He said what? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. This is talking about Esau. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Okay. You can break this down a multitude of ways. You know, you look at America symbol, what is it? It's an eagle. You look at Mexico symbol, what is it? It's an eagle. You look at Argentina's symbol, what is it? An eagle. You look at Great Britain symbol, what is it? An eagle. You look at Italy symbol, what is it? An eagle. You look at France symbol, what is it? An eagle. What do they all have in common? Who running all them countries? 
So called white man. But keep reading. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Though that he set his nest amongst the stars. What does that mean? We're going to get into it. Read. Thence will I bring thee down, said the Lord. The Lord said he's going to bring this man down. But we're going to break down verse 4, though. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Give me Job chapter 20, verse 4. Look at Job. Chapter 20, verse 4. I mean, you know, you can use it like that, you know. His 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 symbol, it, you know, is the eagle, but the eagle represents the top predator on the planet. Come on. You know, anything about an eagle, you do any researches on eagle, the eagle they can soar for miles and miles and miles away. They have the best vision out of all the birds. They can see prey. And when they see prey, they can they can basically nose dive at over 200 miles an hour. Come down, bam, take up any prey that they want to. Read this out. The book of Job, chapter 20 and verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short. Esau is the wicked, read. And the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment, though his excellency, excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds. Though his excellency... Though his rulership reaches up to the heavens, where he is the top predator on the planet, and his head reaches the clouds, he at the top, read. Yet he shall perish forever. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. This got to happen, Israel. It got to happen. Because if it don't happen, you're going to be a slave generation to generation to generation to generation. Read. Like his own dung. Like his what? Like his own dung. I know what dung is, right? Read. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? That's how we're going to do it. Obadiah. Verse 4 again. Obadiah. Verse 4. Read that again, huh? The book of Obadiah. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, Thence will I bring thee down, say the Lord. And say, though thou set thy nest amongst the stars. What does that mean? Just broke down what it say, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. We understand what that means now. And he say, though thou set thy nest amongst the stars. What does that mean? I mean, you know, you can use it as, you know, him so-called going to space. The eagle has landed one giant step for mankind. You know, you 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 know you can use it, but you know that's not really biblical. Isaiah chapter fourteen verse twelve. Let's see what Obadiah was really talking about. Isaiah fourteen and verse twelve. Isaiah, he said that Esau was going to set his nest amongst the stars. What does it mean for Esau, the so-called white man, to set his nest amongst the stars? What does that really mean? Read this out. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 12. How art thy fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now, we just read that heaven represents rulership or the eagle. Read. And Lucifer just basically means light bearer, but it's talking about Esau right now. Read. O Lucifer, son of the morning. The top nation on the planet. Read. How art thy cut down to the ground? Which did us weaken the nations. Read on. For if thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. He said he's going to do what? I will ascend into heaven. Read. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He's going to do what? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Who are the stars of God? He said he's going to do what? I, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He said he's going to be our rulership over Jacob. He said he's going to exalt his throne above the stars of God. We are the stars of God. When you read the book of Numbers, didn't it say a star shall, a star shall rise out of Jacob? We are the stars of God. Read. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Then he said he's going to descend into heaven. He's going to exalt his thrones above the stars of God. Then he said he will sit 
among upon the mount of the congregation. Read. And the size of the north. Where is the north at? He said he's going to sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Where is the north at? Where is the sides of the north at? You know, like, you know, you know, I be hearing, you know, when they be saying about the size of the north. Give me Psalms 48 and 1. Psalms 48 and 1. Read this out. The book of Psalms, chapter 48 and verse 1. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful, beautiful for situation. Hold on, read verse 1 again. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. He say, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised in the city of our God. So the context is right now, we're talking about the city of our God. Read. And the mountain of his holiness. So the city of our God is the mountain of his holiness. Read. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. So the city of our the city of our God and the mountain of holiness is Mount Zion. The peoples or Jerusalem. Read. On the size of the north. Oh no, where, where is that? On the size of the north. Now nah, you say where? On the size of the north. Read. The city of the great king. Let's talk about Jerusalem, man. Moses, pull up that 1948 mandate. Let's see when this prophecy came alive, man. Let's see if Esau did not ascend into heaven and exalt his throne amongst the stars. And did he sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north? When did this happen, bro? 1948 mandate. Who over there in your homeland? Is it the Arabs? Is it the China man? Japanese man in them. King Jong Un in them. Nah. Is this man that he said that he was going to do this who the scriptures call Lucifer? So called white man. This is the vision that Obadiah was seeing. It's all through the scriptures. But this is who they said. That this was going to happen. That's it on that, Moses. We good on that. We don't need that. Let's go back. Isaiah 14, 13. Isaiah 14, 13. Read this out. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 13. What thou hast said in thine heart. I will ascend into heaven. He said what? I will ascend into heaven. Read. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He said he going to do what? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Give me second Thessalonians 2 and 4. What do that mean? He said he going to exalt his throne on the star, uh, uh, upon the stars of God. Let's see. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Start at verse 3. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 3. Read. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. He said that the Most High cannot come except there be a falling away of Esau first. Read. And that man of sin be revealed. That that man of sin is being revealed to this day by the prophets, which is Esau. Read. The son of perdition. The son of sin. Read. Who will pose up and exalt himself above all that is called God. Uh, ain't, ain't we called gods? He said he will oppose it and exalt himself above all that is called God. That means his city. That means his laws. That means his commandments. And that means his peoples. Read. All that is worship. So that he is. So that he as God sit up in the temple of God. He said he did what? So that he as God sit up in the temple of God. Didn't Donald Trump just call Jerusalem the capital of Israel? Bible prophecies. Read. Showing himself that he is God. He means, give me a picture, says your boy Jerry, man. He said that the man of perdition was going to show himself as God. Bam, there it is right there, man. 
It said that the man of sin, the man of perdition, who was going to sit amongst the congregation of the stars, he was going to sit on the congregation of God and call himself God. And to show the whole world that he is God. The question is, who is this talking about? I don't know, man. Seem like all of the fingers is pointing at Mr. White. Mr. Billy Bob and Joe and them. <laughs> That's what it looked like. This is the vision of Obadiah. You got to break this stuff down, line upon line, precept upon precept. Let's go back. Isaiah 14, 13. Isaiah 14, 13. Read this out. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart. Esau said in his heart, read. I will ascend into heaven. He said he's going to ascend into rulership. Read. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He said he's going to exalt his throne above the Israelites, or all that is called God. Read. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. He said he's going to even sit in a city. He's going to sit in a congregation. Read. In the sides of the north. Which we know is Mount Zion. Read on. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. He said he's going to be so high upon his rulership. He got submarines, he got missiles, he got fighter jets, he got armies on everybody, everybody paying him taxes. He said he's going to send above the heights of the clouds. Read. I will be like the most high. He said what? I will be like the most high. Give me Isaiah 47 and 8. He said he's going to be like the most high. Let's see. Let's see how. Isaiah 47 and 8. He said he's going to be like the most high. How? Read this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47 and verse 8. Read. Therefore, hear now this. Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly. Which is Esau. Read on. That says in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. That's how he said it. That's how he said it right there. Let's go back. Isaiah 14. So this man showing you how he ascended into heaven through his rulership. How he said he was going to exalt his throne above the stars of God, which is the Israelites successfully did him, put him on slave ships. He said he will sit upon the Mount of the Congregation, 1948 mandate, in the side to the north, which is Jerusalem. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. He said he's going to be so high in his rulership. He said, I will be like the Most High. Read verse 15. Let's see what the Most High said he's going to do to him. Read. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. He said, what? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. How many of us want to see that? Come on. Got a lot of alligator hands in here. I guess we like those 60 hour ships, man. <laughs> he said that this man was going to be brought down to the pit. Read. To the size of the pit. He said he's going, in, he going into the cotton field, man. There will be no sunblock in the kingdom, bro. Boils and everything. That's right. We're going to send the Kimbe Mutombo out there, eight feet, all eight feet, six inches of them. We're going to be taskmasters over him. And we're going to sell their children. We're going to sell their wives. And we're going to sell their sons. And we're going to sell their daughters to the Sabines. We're going to have a slave trade with them. They will be working six hours. They will be working six days a week. The only day that they will get off is the seventh day. Sun up to sundown. Hard bondage. They will build. They will build the cities. They will clean up this planet like they're supposed to do. And I know it's kind of hard. I know it's hard. You know. You know. Because Esau done dumbed us down, especially our brothers. We're supposed to be, you know, joyous of that. You know, we warlike like creatures. Back to Obadiah, verse five. Obadiah. Obadiah, verse 5. Read this. The book of Obadiah, verse 5. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how are they cut off? So, you know, this is a vision Obadiah basically asking them. If thieves came to thee, and robbers by night, you got people out there stealing for you, taking everybody's goods, 
You say, how art thou cut off? How you lose your rulership, Esau? Read. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? Would they what? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? So you say, would they not have stolen till they had enough? How did they get America? They stole it. How did they get Guatemala? They stole it. How did they get Mexico? They stole it. How did they get Africa? They stole it. You say, would you not have stolen till you had enough? Read. If the great gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Would you not even leave some grapes for the other nations? Read. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are the things of Esau searched out? They searched out through his prophets. Real men of the Most High getting in these scriptures line upon line. Precept upon precept. Not leaving no stone unturned. You know, Israel got a lot to say, but they'll never say nothing about these precepts. Read. How are his hidden things sought up? How are his hidden things sought out? How do we find out that Esau was a so-called white man? How do we know that he done lied to us through all his deception? How do we know that Jesus Christ is a so-called black man? How do we know that we the Israelites? How do we know all these things? How? Because at one point in time, we was walking around like the Valley of Dry Bones, bro. The Mexicans, they was all into their Catholicism. Having their confession with the priest. Virgin Mary. All that garbage, man. Still eat pork every day. And yeah, you know Judah. You know Judah. You know how Judah is. Judah's silly, man. Judah will do anything for a dance. Judah will do anything for a dollar. That's how Esau turned us out. How are his hitting things searched out? Because the Lord said they was going to be searched out. Ezekiel 47. Shalaki. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. The Lord said that the judgment on the daughter of Babylon, he said that the hidden things must be searched out. So Obadiah is asking how is it searched out? It's searched out right here. Read this on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Talking about Esau himself. Read. Sit on the ground. I said, bro, you, you, you know, why, why, why is the Most High telling Esau to sit on the ground? Where is Esau at right now? He's in the clouds. He's in the heavens. So he's telling Esau to do what? Come here, partner. I'm going to need you to sit down real quick. Read on. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. Ain't no throne on the ground. Read. O daughter of the Chaldeans. The daughter of the Chaldeans. Read. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. That's how his things are getting searched out because he's no more being called tender and delicate no more. No matter how many Chick-fil-A sandwiches Becky going to bring me at the job, Becky going into the cotton field. No matter how many uh, ding-dongs and ice cream puffs and honey buns that they bring out to the homeless, to, to them hamites over there in Africa. They will be in the tobacco fields. Not in the tobacco fields, so like here. They're going to be in the rice fields. They're going to be going on slave ships. That's how his things are being searched out. Read. Take the millstone. Take the millstone, read. And grind mill. Uncover thy locks. He's telling them, man, you got to uncover the locks. Uncover all of the deception through his fake preachers. Through his fake ministers, through his fake politicians, through all of it. Uncover the lock. Read. Make bare the leg. He said, do what? Make bare the leg. You know you can't hide nothing, man, when you look up that skirt. When you look up that dress, ain't nothing to hide no more then. Read on. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Read. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not leave thee as a man. You hear what the Lord said? The Lord said he's going to take vengeance on these people. I mean, don't they, I mean, I mean, brought us over here on slave ships. I mean, they treated us worse than, than the animals. They fed us worse than the animals. They continue to do that today. Racial discriminating against, job discriminating against, House discriminating against. 
You can't even live in a certain neighborhood if you make a, a, a certain amount of money. They make it very hard for the Israelites out here. Read on. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel. Read. Sit down silent. He said, be quiet, he saw. Read. And get thee unto darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kings. The what? The Lady of Kings. That's what he called himself as a lady. You know, a lot of our brothers turned out because of the so-called white men. A lot of our brothers walking around here with the, with the, with the you know, with the dip in the hip. Because they watching that white man on TV. And a lot of us start with their cartoons when they little. Mm -hmm. uh, if you actually pay attention, there's a lot of homosexuality in the cartoons. What was the cartoon, Arthur, the, the, the Mr. Teeth, Radburn. Mr. Radburn? I remember growing up, man. I used to watch the show Arthur from time to time, right? You know Arthur, the little rat-looking thing, right? Man, it, 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 they just said that Arthur teacher was gay, man. And the show Arthur is still running. And guess what? Mama's still letting the little baby watch Arthur. So the teacher's going to start off gay. Then you already know who's going to be gay next. Arthur himself. Then it's going to go for Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder finna come out homosexual. Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues finna come out homosexual. All of the Power Rangers finna come out homosexual as well. The Teletubbies. The, you know, Teletubbies I already got down. You should have been known that by now. You got your little boy watching the Teletubbies. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, man. Right? What, what's, what's the new shows they got now? Paw Patrol? Paw Patrol, Patrol they're going to come out some homosexuals real soon. Rescue Heroes. They done already did Bruce Jenner. They gave Bruce Jenner all the award came out. Hello, Caitlin. Now, now, I never forget when I seen that, man. I said, I said, some, this is before I came into the truth. I said, that ain't right. See, that's just, but that's how his hitting things are searched out through us. But when we tell Israel these things, it's like they look at us like we crazy or something. It's like they look at us like, ah, oh, man, these niggas tripping or something. They can't believe what the prophets are bringing out, but we showing it to them in the scriptures. It's like, you know, Israel, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. We're getting along and along and along. Obadiah. Let's go back. Obadiah. Verse 7. Obadiah. Verse 7. And if you can't see that this ain't matching up, precept upon precept, line upon line with the so-called white man, then hey, this might not be for you. Read this. The book of Obadiah. Verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. They say, all the men of thy confederacy have forced you to the border. Read. The men that were at peace with thee. The men that was once at peace with you, read. Have deceived thee. Have they what? Have deceived thee. Have ran game on the so-called white man. Read. And prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. It say all the men of thy confederacy have forced thee even to the border. Who is it? Who who is confederate with the so-called white man? Who is on the United Nations? Who is on the European Union? You know anything about the United Nations and the European Union? It's a bunch of uprising going on. They get tired of the so-called white man's tariffs. They get tired of his taxes. They get tired of his his laws. They get tired of him breaking treaties. They get tired of him not coming up on his agreements. And they starting to turn on that man. Psalms 83. Psalms 83. Psalms 83, verse 1. Let's get this confederacy. It says... And the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. What does that mean? Who is confederate with this devil? Read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And consulted against thy hidden one. It say they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. 
and have consulted against our hidden ones. How come the other nations haven't been telling us that we the Israelites as well? You know, we always say it's so-called white man, so-called white man. He is the ambassador among the heathen. We understand that. But how come Kush ain't been telling us, or how come Foot ain't been telling us that we the Israelites? How come Ishmael ain't been telling us that we the Israelites? What about Amon and Moab and them? Why they ain't been telling us that we the Israelites? Because they are confederate with this man. That's why all of them, all of our enemies are going into hard bondage. If your enemies are at hard bondage, that means a peaceful lifestyle for you. And that's thus says the Lord. Read on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Say, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Who knew that was an Israelite five years ago? Read again up. And they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Successfully, they did it to a T. And it was all of the nations, bro. Every other nation. Why you think Elam and them setting up 7 7 in your neighborhoods? Selling your outdated food. Selling your high-priced gas. How come gas is higher in the hood and then lower in the high-wealthy um, neighborhoods? How is that possible? For the people that's living low and got lower incomes, they should be paying lower in gas. And the people that got the high income, they should be paying higher in gas. How is it? How, 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 how does that work? And Esau selling you the gas, but who he used to sell you the gas? A lot born them. Or they confederate with the so-called white man. How do Amon and Moab, the Japanese and the Chinese... How do they can come over here to America? They set up a donut shop in your neighborhood. They set up a weave shop in your neighborhood. They set up a, a they set up a nail shop in your neighborhood. And they're gonna sell you that crunk that 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 kung pao chicken. How is this possible that they can come in your neighborhoods? I ain't seen not one moonwalk in South Lake Curl. Not one weave store. Is in East Fort Worth. Now, one donut shop is in Highland Park. But they can come to your neighborhoods and do that? How is that possible? Because they all in cahoots with each other. But Esau is the ambassador among the heathen. Read on. For they have consulted together with one consent. He said they did what? For they have consulted together with one consent. What is, you know, if the Japanese and the Chinese can come in your neighborhood to set up businesses, how come we don't never see where they live? Y'all ever seen their neighborhoods? Where they be pulling up at? Even the Africans. Africans, they'll come down here. They'll talk to you bad, especially Judah. They're going to look at you real bad. Where do they live at? What about the Iranians and the East Indians? How is it that they can come in your neighborhoods and set up all these businesses and you can never find out where they live? How is this possible? Something to think about, Israel. It's safe where they have consulted together. With one consent. That one consent is, we're going to blood suck these Negroes dry. And we're going to make them love everything that we give them. That Southwest Beijing chicken be real good, don't it? From Panda Express, right? You know, that weave look real good, don't it? Going in there to them nail shops, you know. Think about it. They're using the same utensils on about thousands and thousands of people that come in the store. They use the same utensils. So you saying that everybody come in there, they, everybody hands clean? So nobody that came in there and got their toes done, nobody got feet fungus, and nobody got that? Okay. 
And when you look at these stores, who is the main consumer? It's safe when they have consulted together with one consent to put a veil over your eyes. Read. They are confederate against me. They all of them, all of them are against you, Israel. They all are. Once we start realizing, then we'll start rising up against these nations. But it's going, it, 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 it's going to explain to you who these people are. Read. The tabernacles of Edom. Why is Edom the first one that they, why is Edom the first one get named out? Because he is the ambassador among the heathen. Read. And the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites, man, out of our born them. Eddie up and buy. Read. Of Boaz. Hey, you go you want some of them donuts in the morning? Who's gonna be in there? That's a fact. Read. And the Hagarine. The Hagarines. And the, the Hagarines. Who's selling you all these fake handbags, these fake shoes, these fake clothes? Who doing it? Who up in the bazaar right now selling you the fake duty and burp? It's them Hamites, man. Go over there at Big T Bazaar right now. You're going to see every clothing store is going to be ran by a Hamite. That's a fact. Read. And Jabal. And Amen. And Amen. Who's selling you the Kung Pao chicken? Moonwalk. Fake rice. Fake egg rolls. Fake spring rolls. Have y'all ever went inside of a so-called Japanese place? They're selling you that they're selling out that food. It's 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 one of the most nastiest, unsanitary places that you can go in. Like the places that you call and then you order the Kung Pao chicken with the spicy fried rice. How about you drive up and go to the store and go pick it up? You, you're going to walk in, you're going to throw up. That's how they get down. Read. And Amalek. And who? And Amalek. Who's selling you white Jesus? Who's doing this? It's them. Read. The Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also is joined with them. The Assyrians read. They have hope in the children of Lot. Salah. Read. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sir Syrah, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kassar. You hear what David said? He said, all his enemies do unto them as we did unto the Midianites. Anybody want to know what happened to the Midianites under the hand of Moses? What did Moses do to the Midianites? Numbers 31 and 6. Let's find out. King David said, do unto my enemies as Moses did in the past. Do them the same way. Let's see what happened to the Midianites. Numbers 31 and 6. Read this. The book of Numbers, chapter 31 and verse 6. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe. Them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses. And they slew all the males. What they do? And they slew all the males. Why, they, why, why do they be getting mad at us when we be saying that? Uh, you know, we going too hard. Uh, you, ain't, you, ain't supposed to, you ain't supposed to do that. What if they do? Uh, and they slew all the males. Read. And they slew the kings of the Median. Beside the rest of them that were slain. Namely, Ebod, and Rakim, and Zer, and Hur, and Rebel, five kings of Median. Balaam, also the son of Aeor, they slew with the sword. Read. And the children of Israel took all the women of Median captives. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. They said they did what? And the children of Israel took all the women of Median captives. And all of them women of the other nations, they will be in the cotton field. Read. And their little ones. And, 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 and who? And their little ones. Look, 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 look King John on in them. He will be in the cotton field. We will have the biggest cotton, or the biggest cotton uh, gin ever, man. Read on. And took the spoil of all their cattle. Even took their cattle, man. Read. And all their flocks. And all their goods. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt. 
and all their goodly castles with fire. With what? With fire. So what, what's the problem? Why do they get mad at us for going out on the street corners proclaiming the downfall of our enemies? Somebody not reading their Bible. Obadiah, verse 8. Obadiah. See, man, we're not them Hebrews, man. We're going to tell them drop dead in their face. That's right. Because we're about to go to war. And you friendly brothers out there, we're going to have to put y'all to sleep. That's right. Read this. The book of Obadiah, verse 8. Shall I not in that day, say the Lord, even destroy the wise man out of Edom, and understanding out of the Mount of Esau, Read. and thy mighty men, Otaman, shall I be dismayed. To the end that every one of them out of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. By what? By slaughter. By what? By slaughter. Hey, who really ready for this, Bruce? Hey, they saying that, hey, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we're not supposed to go on the street corner. We're not supposed to do that. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, we're supposed to do, you know, we're supposed to do it like this. Read verse 9 again. And thy mighty men, O Taman, shall be dismayed. To the end that every one of them out of Esau may be cut off by slime. By what? By slime. By what? By slime. Isaiah 14, 22. Bring it out, Cap. Isaiah 14, 22. See, man, we, 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 we not them, we not them, you know, bruise that, you know, we the, we the real Hebrews of the Bible, man. We God chosen for real. And we got to take back this kingdom by violence. Uh, there ain't going to be no negotiation for it. How many, how many treaties have Esau done, done, done broke? He ain't going to bow down. We're going to have to take it. Read verse 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their father. You know, they always say on the street corner, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I wasn't even alive. Read it again. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their father. Hey, this how it's going to go down, man. A lot of these Hebrews out here, they're going to probably want to pull a precept on them. I'm going to pull a sword on them. That's right. Read. That they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the walls with cities. Read. For I will rise up against them. What the Lord said he's going to do? For I will rise up against them. Read. Said the Lord of hosts. Said who? Said the Lord of hosts. Read on. And cut off from Babylon the name, and remnant, and son, and nephew, said the Lord. Read. I will also make it a possession for the bitter, and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction, said the Lord of hosts. Said the Lord of hosts, man, I day, I over die in verse 10. We're not making none of this stuff up. This does say the Lord. A lot of Hebrews pulling precepts with skinny jeans on, man. Yeah. Thinking that they cool because they get some views on YouTube. We have to put them niggas to sleep too. What we doing here at this school, man, we building up real men of the most high. Real, real battle axe bruise, man. That's right. Real deal warriors. You know, a lot of sisters got a problem with that. A lot of brothers got a problem with that. But up in here, man, we're going to do thus says the Lord. Read verse 10. The book of Obadiah. Verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off for her. It said, for the violence against us, shame shall cover them. You want to see a perfect example of shame? When we go out there in the street corners, man, we show Esau them slavery pictures. They don't want to talk nothing about that, man. <coughs> They are very, very ashamed of that. You ask them who's shooting us down in the street corners, they don't want to talk about that. They are very ashamed on that. You ask them who in the ghettos, who get racial discriminated, job discriminated, they are very ashamed of that. They don't want to talk about that. But it said, for thy violence against Jacob, against the Israelites, shame shall cover thee. And then after your shame, thou shalt be cut off forever. By slaughter. This is the vision of Obadiah. A lot of us, we say we believe in the word, but, you know, this right here, ah, you know. Ezekiel 35 and 1. A couple last precepts, we're closing out. We got, uh, we got part two coming up next week. We're going to do verses 11 through 21.
Last precepts, Ezekiel 35. In verse 1. Read this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, and verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Against who? Against the Mount Seir. Who is Mount Seir? Same man we've been talking about this whole time. Who dwelt in Mount Seir? Edom, Esau, Idumia, Demon, Dedan, Taman. Read. And prophesy against you know you got some schools out there they tell their congregations to go to the street corners and not prophesy against Esau. I can't make this up. It's a big school out there too. Real big. They specifically tell their brothers to go to the street corners and not prophesy against Edom. What the Lord say do I? Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. You know, we get a lot of slack because we do that. And that's thus says the Lord, man. Right. What Bible you reading? Read on. And say unto it, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. If the Lord is against thee, we against it up in here. Read. And I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Read. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. You heard what this man did to us? Read it again from the top, verse 5. Verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. Perpetual hatred. That means everlasting. I know them Chick-fil-A sandwiches good at work. Them donuts good at work. But if you was to ever go on trial for a murder trial, the same ones that's bringing you the Chick-fil-A sandwiches, they're going to all get in the back and they're going to all vote you guilty. That's right. That's a fact, man. That is a fact. That's what they're going to do. Because they born in it in their DNA. Read. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. By the force of the sword in our captivity. Shot down in the street. Thrown in the prison for no reason. Oppression, slave ships, smallpox, diseases. In the time of their calamity, read. In the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith though thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. That's why he read. He eat his steak. Rare. He eat his food rare, just like an animal. He read because he it, it represents bloodshed. He is a murderer. Read. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate. He said he gonna cut it off. Read. And cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. Read on. And I will fill his mountains with this slain man. He said he gonna do what? And I will fill his mountains with this slain man. It's gonna be a lot of donkeys with a lot of uh, Edomites on it. Read on. And thy hills. And in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers, shall they fall that are slain with the sword. That are what? That are slain with the sword. Read on. I will make thee perpetual desolations. He said he gonna do what? I will make thee perpetual desolations. And thy city shall not return. And ye shall know I that I am the Lord. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God. Say it the Lord of hosts. Read on. I will even do according to thy anger. He said what? I will even do according to thy anger. Read on. And according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. They do that because of envy for us. Don't they want to walk like us? Uh, you know, you got the white woman. She went out. She got the butt shots because she wanted to have the hips like Judah. Uh, you got the white woman, she went and got her lips done because she want to have her lips like Judah. That's right. You got the white woman walking around with the cornrows because she want them like Judah. That's right. It's all hatred but just because of envy. That's all it is. But then what do Judah do? What do Northern Kingdom do? Do what Becky do. Can you believe that? The brainwashing of our people, man, is deep. Runs deep. 
These people do that to us because they hate us and they envy us. We do that to them because we think that they God chosen and we really are. We got to come up out of that mentality, Israel. Read on. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Jump down to verse 15. Verse 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all thy dunia, even all of it. Even some of it. Even all of it. Two thirds of it. Even all of it. Even all of it. Me. And they shall know that I am the Lord. No, on that note, shalom, Israel. Shalom.